we are going to have a look at the Arctic Alpine 12 Passive. And as you might have already noticed, I am not sitting in my usual spot, which is like roughly 30 centimeters behind me, but I am sitting here. And I am doing this because the Arctic Alpine 12 Passive is a very special kind of cooler. Instead of the usual stuff that everybody expects, like a big ass heatsink and, you know, a bunch of very bad fans, this thing is nothing. It's literally a, a chunk of aluminum where somebody grinded a, a, a couple of, of cuts in, into it. It's going to be hella interesting. However, and, and that's kind of an important point, this thing is quite a bit older. Um, I am aware that there was another Alpine 12 passive version, uh, not just this one. There is another one for AM4 sockets. And uh, as far as I could tell, it is listed under Arctic's uh, end of life page, so I, I guess they, they are not producing it anymore. The only one left and the only one I was able to get is this Alpine 12 passive for Intel CPU. Ta da! And this is basically it a chunk of aluminum. <laughs> How easy was that? A chunk of aluminum which can double as an instrument. <laughs> Very musician. As this thing is not only a little bit older, but uh, a lot older, uh, this has some of Arctic's ancient MX2 thermal paste uh, stuck on, on the back. And considering the fact when MX2 was produced and uh, that I bought this cooler right now, uh, I'm guessing the best option would be to remove that. So this is not going to be the normal review I usually do uh, due to the fact that this Cool. Oh, this is sticky. Arctic, what is this? I won't. So, this is not going to be the usual CPU cooler review because this is a very special type of cooler. This is what I would say the original type of passive cooler that you will find. Basically, just a extreme version of an, yeah, let's call it SMD heatsink that, that you would find on Aliexpress. You know, these little kinds of copper things that you just glue onto some kind of chip or, or whatever uh, piece of electric equipment that produces heat and that is supposed to cool it down somehow. And this is basically the same thing, just enormous. It is completely made out of aluminum um, with some sort of black coating on it and it has 20 of those enormous fins. The, on the bottom side we got a bit of a protruding piece that is uh, sticking out where it's going to touch the CPU and it is, uh, considering how small like Arctic uh, Freezer 34's uh, base was, this is significantly bigger. It, it, it will need to be significantly bigger. And then you just got four holes to mount on top of your CPU. For the rest, uh, I gotta give Arctic some credit um, for how much they put as a specifications list here. For example, the fact that they put a noise level on there, that's, uh, yeah, zero. Who would have thought about that? And then if you go online and look at the product page, uh, you will find a spot where it says uh, heat pipes. So yes, a, a solid chunk of aluminum does not come with heat pipes. Who, who would have thought about that? For the rest, it is 95 times 95 millimeters and it is 69 millimeters high. So in terms of like ultra SFF, this is pretty small form factor. However, there are smaller coolers, like for example, the Nokia L9i, which is significantly smaller and it has a fan. So uh, yeah, it's going to be hard to compete. Um, It weighs half a kilogram, and if you slam it onto your finger, it hurts. <sighs> so as I said, this is what I would describe as like the original passive cooler, just a massive heatsink. Like if you if you take a look at what comes out nowadays, you have something like that Noctua passive cooler, which is e freaking enormous with heat pipes, and it has like every direction air trans goingness and and whatever else they built into it to make it you know, perform as well as it could, or you have like those Silverstone, I, I don't know what they are called, but they are massive. And then you have these kind of things. These is, 
This is like what I would call ancient, this is the original shit, it, just, it is just one massive block which is supposed to cool down a CPU. According to the spec sheet, this thing is cooling down up to 47 watts TDP. As you might have learned from my previous videos or anybody else's videos, um, TDP is not like an exact spec, it is more like you have like four or five engineers which are writing down a number on a paper, they throw all those pieces of paper into some bag and somebody takes the paper out and they, well that's the TDP. Yeah, I've seen coolers outperform other coolers with half the TDP, uh, so uh, no, I, I don't give a crap about it. There is going to be a very special thing why we are doing this video, because this is meant for Intel LGA 1150. For example, the exact one that they used here as a reference is a Intel i3 7300T or uh, how I would call it, my microwave. That was the time when the cooler came out. I mean, you, you can judge uh, according to that. I don't have such an old Intel CPU. However, um, as Intel was nice for a change, they made sure that the Intel LGA 1200 socket is cross compatible with 1150s. So everything like 10th gen Intel can be hooked up to this thing, which is perfectly fine for this video. However, the only CPU that I have from that gen is a 10700K, a CPU which will be a bit hot considering the size and the fanlessness of this cooler. So what I wanted to do is take something smaller, an i5. And the only i5 that I own is a 12500 non-K, a CPU which is not not particularly hot, uh, however it is running at 65 watts TDP if I remember correctly and if we assume the TDP is for once not like an imaginary number, so that's a bit too much for this heatsink. But however we can still undervolt it, we can uh, hope for the best and uh, we can uh, yeah, <laughs> hope for the best. However there is still another issue and that is that the Intel um, 12500 is mounted down on an LGA 1700. Um, which is not compatible with this cooler. However, what I have here is an Asus Strix ROG Z698 Gaming Wi-Fi D4. Who comes up with those names? And what's very special about this board is that good guy A Asus, as they are, they drilled in the holes for LGA 1200 and 1700. Now that's not done for every uh, Asus board that exists out there. Some of them do not have those double mountings, but this one has, which means that I can take a cooler which was built during the generation of um, a 7300 and then cr uh, cross compatible it up to 1200 and then cross compatible it with a motherboard that has an LGA 1200 mounting to a 12500, which is pretty freaking cool. Now we just need to hope that this thing can survive it or that it can cool it to some degree. We are going to use my favorite thermal paste, Arctic Silver 5, because uh, it's Arctic Silver 5 and it is good. I don't know if, if anybody talked to anybody else, but it perfectly fits. Look at this. <laughs> on the other side we have the RAM which is like sitting on the cooler. So maybe the RAM will also get some, some sort of cooling. How nice of, of Arctic. How nice of them. So while we are at doing very weird stuff that does not make a lot of sense, let's put an appropriate GPU into this uh, let's call it piece of madness. And what GPU goes perfectly into a shenanigan like this? Exactly, a 3090 Ti. I do not see anything wrong with this setup. I think this is exactly how Arctic imagined it to be used on a 10, a 12500. I don't see any reason why not. Okay, so now everything is ready. We have the GPU hooked up, we have the CPU cooler hooked up, everything uh, is connected to electricity. We have a little handy monitor over here connected to the GPU. So at least something is spinning, that's, that's already a, good, a very good first start. For the first run, I will let everything uh, run on stock. Uh, I don't see a particular reason to uh, to tweak anything in here. That's not. Uh, I don't don't think it's the best uh, choice right now. Let's boot into Windows and uh, see what happens. 
Right now we are sitting at 47 degrees C on the package, which is not that, that bad actually. However, uh, everything is running at like 4 gigahertz, which is very cute. Right now the package is burning up at uh, somewhere around 19 watts, which is still very much into uh, inside that DDP rating of the cooler of 47. However, let's see what happens if I turn that up here, yes. As it says on the Intel's pe product page, this thing is ramping to 65 plus. Uh, so now we are sitting at 67 degrees C. However, yeah, let's let's give this some time. I'm stoked to see if this cooler can do this. Oh, now it's hot. Now it's really hot. Not not yet like hand burny, but. It is hot! Now we can quickly have a look at what happens if we just add one fan. Not spinning like crazy, you know, just wiggling a bit. Yeah, let's say it is like, like pushing air down. Wow, this is happening significantly less than I expected. A lot of tinkering around later, I managed to find an option in an ASUS BIOS, because I'm not that used to, to ASUS BIOSes, uh, where I could just straight up set a, uh, a max voltage, so I set it to 50, and I just said, yeah, well, let's see what happens. And what happens is that actually, uh, the CPU would run at exactly 50 watts. No questions asked. It will do so at the cost of just down throttling uh, to uh, 3500, yeah, 3.6 gigahertz, uh, which is like four or 500 uh, underneath the official spec, which is not um, that good, <laughs> uh, really not. But we can see that the temperatures are now way, way better. The real question though is if this thing will survive something like uh, an actual game. Okay, so stock Minecraft and we are looking at a uh, solid 100 plus FPS, which uh, yeah, I mean we have a raw Minecraft machine here. Um, yeah, the temps are again, um, yeah, <laughs> um, interestingly high sometimes and uh, a bit. What's also quite interesting to see is, uh, although they are very very high, the uh, package voltage is dropping way more. Now we are looking at a 38, 35 watts package. Um, and the CPU is sometimes even going higher. It's going back to 4.1 gigahertz at 35 watts. I do not understand how this works. I mean, those uh, CPUs are like, like black magic boxes. You, uh, you ask for a speed and they will answer it with a number in watts and you never know what comes out. But still, this freaking worked! I was able to cool a 12500 non-K with an Arctic Alpine 12 passive using a uh, sophisticated method called um, good that Asus uh, drills more holes into their motherboard and it worked. Of course it is not working perfectly fine for gaming but it is freaking working. So what I see here is like a potential application to reuse this cooler on, uh, on on something like a 12400 that should be like close to stock at it works or, or, or 12 uh, whatever the i3 number is or even this and then just limit the the wattage i mean uh, if you do like a, a little media nas media pc like like those kinds of things those do not require that much of uh, of cpu heat so this will still work perfectly fine and considering that this cooler costs like 18 euros, uh, okay, yeah, why not? I mean, maintenance-free, as they say, no, uh, no dust, no sound, and it's really no sound, no dust. So uh, yeah, good, <laughs> good job here. Uh, it is doing exactly what they are advertising. It is. Can you cool down a uh, a 12500 using an Alpine uh, 12 passive, yes, the answer is yes. Should you do it? No, you should not do it. This was a stupid idea, but I had a, this way I had a possibility to look at this cooler, uh, which was not supposed to be using the CPU, mind you, but uh, still, it is an interesting relic of the past. Uh, so yeah, this was one hell of a weird ride. Uh, thank you for coming along and uh, hope to see you in the next one. Bye bye.